Hello, my name is Emily, and today we're going to be discussing how people impact the environment. So what is the environment? Well, it's the surrounding or condition in which someone such as humans, plants, and even animals, such as this beautiful whale right here, lives in their home. And they are dependent on the air, food, and water we drink. As you can see right here, I'm drinking my nice ice cold water. It plays an important role in living our lives and maintaining the existence of all life on Earth. Therefore, it sounds like we should protect the environment, right? Well, of course we should. However, there are everyday things that humans do that have a negative impact on the environment, so let's discuss these negative impacts. Although there are many things that negatively impact the environment that humans do every day, we're going to discuss the main four. First, we're going to discuss overfishing, pollution, burning fossil fuels, and deforestation. So what's overfishing? Well, it's the process of removing marine life or species of fish from bodies of water to where the rate of species cannot repopulate in a timely manner, making the species underpopulated in a certain area. As you can see here from the movie Finding Nemo, this is a perfect example of overfishing. You can see a big boat using a large net to fish out as many fish as they can in one area. Now let's discuss pollution. It's the contamination of a natural environment that causes a harmful changing effect. The sources of pollution, or the pollutants, can come from a man-made occurrence or naturally occurring contaminants. The four types of pollution are water pollution, air pollution, solid waste pollution, and noise pollution. Now let's discuss water pollution. It's the industrial wastes, leaking water tanks, marine dumping, and radioactive waste that contaminate bodies of water and degrade the water quality, making it toxic to humans and the environment. Now, let's discuss air pollution. It's when solid par particles or gases contaminate the air. These causes are from car emissions, factories, dust and pollen, and mold spores. These can come from outside and inside. Now, let's talk about solid waste pollution. It is municipal wastes, which is everyday trash or garbage going into landfills and taking up land space and releasing toxic chemicals into the air. Now we have hazardous wastes, which is a waste that is a threat to the environment, such as batteries, fire extinguishers, and bug spray. Now we have industrial wastes, which are materials that are produced but are usually left over. These materials can come from iron, steel, and plastics. Now let's talk about noise pollution which is a noise or sound created by human activities such as traffic, planes, garbage trucks, lawnmowers, and even air conditioning units. Let's discuss burning fossil fuels. It's the process of burning old fossils to make coal, fuel, or natural gas. This process emits carbon dioxide, which is also known as CO2. This causes the reddish pink colors you see in this sunset right here, in which the CO2 is being illuminated from the sun to cause these colors. The CO2 is also the leading greenhouse gas that leads towards climate change. Now let's talk about deforestation, which is the process of cutting down all trees in a large area such as a forest so the land can be used for human activities such as farming. This is mainly performed in tropical rainforests. These negative impacts have an effect on the climate, biodiversity, and natural ecosystems. Let's talk about the climate first. It's the process of cutting down, burning, or just letting the trees rot that causes the stored carbon from those trees to be released into the air as carbon dioxide, which fastens the process of climate change. Now let's talk about biodiversity. When trees are removed from an area, this is taking away the home or the habitat of the animals. Because the animals have no place to live anymore and have nowhere to move or relocate, this causes the animals to disappear and therefore become extinct. Now let's talk about natural ecosystems. It's the complete removal of the trees that can cause soil, soil erosion, which can lead to mudslides and wash into the streams and rivers, causing blocked waterways, and can lead to farming problems and loss of, of electrical power. Now, we have a water cycle disruption, which is a system in which the earth receives rain, snow, and other types of precipitation and drinkable water for plants and animals, where trees are cleared and the water that usually comes from the trees are no longer there. So the process of storing and releasing the water into the atmosphere can no longer be done, 
causing the wet nutritious soils to become dry. This isn't good because all plants need wet soil to survive. Dry conditions can potentially lead to fires and cause native plants to die. These fires can look like this. Now, how to prevent overfishing? Or how can humans positively impact overfishing? Well, we first have the rights-based fishery management, allowing many fishermen at once to fish in one area at the same time, like these two gentlemen are portraying here. Now we have traceability standards, which simply tracks the flow of fish being fished out of their habitat. As you can see, there are five fish originally, but now there are only four. And we can see that using traceability standards, we can see how many fish are left over after a fish fisherman has been in an area and where these fish are being taken. Now, how can we positively prevent pollution? We can use public transportation, such as the bus or the metro if you live in a bigger city. Turning off the lights when not in use, as I'm doing right here. Off. <laughs> and doing reduce, reuse, and recycle. So let's say you have a plastic water bottle and you have the choice to put it in a recycling bin or the garbage. Put it in the recycling bin so it can be used for further use in the future. Now, let's prevent burning fossil fuels using similar methods such as preventing pollution, such as using alternative transportation or turning off the lights when not in use. But we can also use alternative power sources such as wind power, which is using wind to move mechanical turbines to produce electricity. Or we can use solar power, which is the process that turns energy from the sunlight into electricity, using lenses or mirrors to bring a large amount of the sunlight into a tiny beam. We can also reduce the amount of red meat that we consume every day. So if you have the option to choose between steak or this hamburger, or if you have the option to have a salad, choose the salad instead. Now, how can we prevent deforestation? First, we can buy products that don't have palm oil in them. Products that do have palm oil in them, such as McDonald's or fast food, such as many fast food, Doritos or um, ramen noodles, these products that contain palm oil have ingredients that are needed from certain trees. So when these trees are cut down so we can use the palm oil, the trees are no longer there, which causes deforestation in the first place. We can also not use as much firewood as we would normally do. Now, ways I personally want to positively impact the environment is that I avoid palm oils as much as possible. And I walk almost everywhere I go and try to reduce the amount of usage I have with my car. So, how are you going to save the environment? That's a question to really ponder on. I want to thank you for listening today. And I hope you learned how humans negatively impact the environment, but ways you can personally positively impact the environment. Thank you.